Hello and welcome to the Renaissance Polymath. I'm your host, Toby Gagnon, and on this episode, I would like to discuss financial basics. Let's go ahead and get things started. When I was growing up, I did not have a good mentor when it came to finances. In fact, the first time I heard the terms assets and liabilities was the second semester of my senior year in high school, and it was part of an accounting class that I was taking. At no point was I ever taught about budgeting or retirement or debt or anything like that. So in this episode, we're going to talk about those things, and maybe it's the first time you're hearing it, maybe it's not, but hopefully you take something away from it. So number one, understanding assets and liabilities in layman's terms. Assets are items that could be liquidated to provide cash flow. Fully owned items such as furniture or goods or some sort of collection, etc. It's something that you have that you own completely that you could turn around and sell tomorrow, let's say, if you needed cash, if you needed money. So assets are items that could be liquidated to provide cash flow. Liabilities are items that incur debt of some kind. Uh, these could be partially owned items such as a vehicle or a property or some sort of revolving credit. So your home can be an asset but can also be a liability. Uh, a vehicle, same thing. Um, revolving credit, that credit card, right? You might have the item that you bought with the credit card, which is the asset. However, the liability is now that credit, that debt that you hold to that financial institution. So that's understanding assets and liabilities kind of in layman's terms. Number two, and really the first step toward uh, financial basics is making a budget. And making a budget is simple, and I encourage this be your first step. This can be done, making a budget can be done on a computer, it can be done on a napkin, and it can be done any, anything in between. Realistically, all you need to do to make a budget is on one side, you list all of your income sources, whether that's per week, per month, I don't recommend per year, but you can always extrapolate. And then on the other side, all you're going to do is list all of your expenses, such as rent or mortgage, car payment, utilities, etc. When in doubt, when making your budget, when in doubt, I recommend a couple things. Number one, underestimate or round down when it comes to income. So for instance, if you make, let's say, $980 a week, don't say I make $1,000 a week, say I make $900 a week. And for expenses, overestimate or round up. So if your, let's say your electric bill is $54 a month, well, now it's not 50 a month, let's say it's 60 a month, and that will help you. And then really all a budget is, is taking all of your income sources and subtracting your expenses from that, whether it's weekly or monthly or whatever, and that's your budget. That's what you're left over with. Obviously, you don't want to end up with a negative number here. Here's another kind of uh, tip for making a budget and understanding of what your expenses are. Simply go to either a credit card or a debit card or something like that and look at that prior month statement and look at all of the expenses that you had, how many times you went and got a coffee, how many times you ate out, that Netflix charge, that Hulu charge, the Disney Plus account that renews, your Spotify, all of that stuff will be there on those electronic payments, whatever those are on that statement. If you pay for things in cash, do your best to keep those receipts over this course of, let's say, a month, and that way you can see those receipts and understand those expenses. All right, so you've made your budget. You understand the money that you get after taxes and things like that and where it goes, and you're budgeting that. Good. Next, saving for retirement. Saving for retirement is extremely important. I'm going to talk specifically about the United States um, for the sake of this conversation, uh, but saving for retirement is extremely important, really no matter where you are. Uh, the federal government here puts a cap on the amount you can contribute pre-tax per year. And that uh, amount right now is $19,500, I believe, up until age 50. And then you can contribute what's called a catch-up amount of about $6,500 a year on top of the nineteen five. dollars So you get about $26,000 if you're over the age of 50. That's pre-tax. However, 
You could consider a Roth account, that's R-O-T-H account as well, but understand that those are taxed now and not later. So that actually does come out of your paycheck. Um, you know, $100 to a Roth account is $100 out of your paycheck. We'll talk about why that might not be the case for pre-tax stuff here in a bit. I recommend, whenever possible, maximizing any pre-tax contributions that are allowed because ultimately what this is going to do, it's going to lower your AGI or your adjusted gross income. And that means ultimately you only get taxed on your AGI. So if you, let's say you make $50,000 a year and you contribute the full 19,500 a year to your retirement account that the government allows, then in the eyes of the federal government, you are going to be taxed at $31,500 for that year instead of 50,000. And that makes a big difference when it comes to taxes. We'll do some, uh, some examples here in a bit. There are calculators available, whether through your employer or through something like bankrate.com. I recommend Bankrate. They've got a ton of calculators and they really don't spam you with too many ads, so that's good. But the calculators are available. What these can do is they can help you understand any increase in contribution that you want to make and how it will directly affect your paycheck. So it, any increase in contribution to a pre-tax account doesn't mean your paycheck will be short by that amount because again, your tax rate changes. So understand that. Use a calculator to understand it the best you can. And lastly, contribute early to maximize compounded interest potential. Basically what this means is have your money make you money, right? You've heard that term. You got to have money to make money. And in the case of a retirement account, that's absolutely true. It earns interest and compound in interest means 6% on $50,000 is going to be less than 6% on $55,000. That's the layman's terms of it. But long and the short of it is contribute early because as that account continues to grow, you'll earn interest on that additional amount. And then you'll earn interest on the interest that you earned and all that stuff. So contribute early, maximize that compounded interest potential. All right, number four, pay yourself first. When you do get your paycheck, pay yourself. This is something I wasn't told until I was in my mid-20s. And basically what this means is you add a line in your budget. So going back to the budget that we made before, you add a line in there to pay yourself like a paycheck. And that can just be, hey, every paycheck I pay myself $208 and that's gonna go right to a savings account or maybe it goes to some sort of a, a slush fund, so to speak, or maybe it's a, a secondary investment account, whatever it is, pay yourself first. That's first and foremost, pay yourself first when you get your paycheck. Once you get your budget done, understand what that, that amount can be. And that could change too, as you grow in your career, maybe you make more money, maybe you get a bonus, pay yourself first. Number five, Pay down debt. I know this sounds like, yeah, well, I didn't need to hear that. But realistically, some people do need to hear that because you need to pay down your debt. And understand there is a difference between good debt and bad debt. Bad debt is something that I would consider uh, revolving credit that stays on that account for longer than 60 days. So if you bought something on a credit card, a uh, 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 piece of clothing, a bag, whatever it is, and you bought it because you really liked it, but you really didn't have the money for it, you basically spent money before you had it, and now that is bad debt because now you're paying interest on that amount to that financial institution. That is bad debt. Good debt, however, can be something like a mortgage. So if your home, let's say you've been in your home for a while and you owe $100,000 on your home, but your home is worth $250,000. You have equity. So yes, you have debt, but if you were to sell your home tomorrow to get out of debt, then you would actually have money come back to you. So there's good debt and there is bad debt. Understand the difference and then pay down the higher interest debt first. So as you start to look to pay down your debt, start with your higher interest uh, amounts, whether that's a credit card or a vehicle loan or whatever it is, pay down that higher interest debt first and do your research before you sign up for something like a consolidate your debt here scheme or plan because sometimes what those mean is you pay this company, let's say company A, you pay company A a certain amount and basically they file bankruptcy for you 
and then they consolidate everything into one and they just make one payment for you over the course of however many years. Understand what those are before you sign up for them. And then last under pay down debt is consider making additional principal payments to long-term loans, such as a vehicle or a home mortgage or, or something like that. Don't pay necessarily the an additional payment, but pay additional principal toward that loan. Because what you could do essentially, if your mortgage payment is $1,000 a month, but only 600 of that actually goes to your home, right? Because you've got escrow in there, which is taxes and, and um, insurance and things like that. If $600 of that only goes to your home, of that $600, 280 of it might be tax. So your actual principal payment on your home could be something as low as $320 of that thousand. So if you can make an additional interest, uh, additional payment, principal payment of $300 a month, that's almost like making two mortgage payments in one month. So whenever possible, consider making additional principal payments for long-term loans. And then number six, savings beyond a retirement account. Like we talked about before with paying yourself first, you could, and I recommend, build yourself a rainy day fund, so to speak, for emergencies or unforeseen circumstances. These could be medical expenses. They could be vehicle repairs. They could be a vacation that it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Build yourself a rainy day fund for those kinds of expenses. That will go a long way to basically allowing you to feel more financially responsible and free. And number two under savings beyond a retirement account is I recommend having cash available in case of an emergency when you can't get cash. So an example of that might be a power outage or a crisis or a closure. Maybe it's a Saturday or a Sunday and you need cash in the moment and the banks are closed or the ATM is broken or it's out of service or maybe it's just out of cash because everybody else has already come and withdrawn as much as they could. I recommend for having cash available in case of an emergency is $1,000 in denominations no higher than a $20 bill. $1,000 cash on hand in denominations no higher than a $20 bill. And I also can, would say consider not placing it all in the exact same spot. Don't put all $1,000 in one spot. Consider placing it in multiple places like maybe your home, maybe you've got a, a safe or something in your home, place some in there, maybe place some in your vehicle, place some in something like a go bag or your purse or your wallet or whatever. Try to divvy it up because you might need that money in your car. Maybe you broke down on the side of the road and you need to pay the tow truck driver in cash because his machine, his credit card machine doesn't work, or maybe he doesn't accept electronic payment. Maybe he only accepts cash. So place this cash in multiple places, the home, the vehicle, the go bag, etc. Okay, to summarize this episode for financial basics, number one, understand the difference between what assets are and what liabilities are. Basically, layman's terms, assets are items that you own that you could sell for cash at any given time, and liabilities are items that you have that are incurring you debt, like a home or a car. Number two, make a budget. Making a budget is simple. This should be your first step. It's as simple as writing it on a napkin or as complex as putting it on a computer. But either way, list all of your income sources on one side, list all of your expenses on the other, and do the math and make sure that you come out on top, in the black, so to speak. And when in doubt, check your statements to understand what expenses you have, underestimate your income, and overestimate your expenses. Number three, saving for retirement is extremely important maximize any pre-tax contribution amounts that you can because it will actually lower the amount of tax you have to pay to the government. There are calculators available. Use those calculators when it comes to um, understanding what your paycheck will look like if you change your increased amount. And something I didn't talk about here that I'll touch on now is if your employer matches your 401k, you should at least be contributing whatever that match is. That's the minimum in my opinion and contribute early to maximize any compounded interest potential. Number four, pay yourself first. 
This is something I wasn't told later in life, but this is extremely important because you need to pay yourself because you ultimately are working for yourself. Number five, pay down debt and pay down the higher interest debt first and understand there's, there's a difference between good debt and bad debt. Um, do your research before you sign up for something like a consolidate your debt plan or scheme or something like that. And when possible, consider making additional principal payments to long-term loans like a mortgage or a vehicle payment. And lastly, savings beyond a retirement account. Build yourself a rainy day fund. Build that up. Let that be part of paying yourself first is building this account. And when you're able to, I recommend having $1,000 in cash in denominations no higher than a $20 bill placed in multiple locations so that you have access to that money in case of an emergency. So that about wraps up this episode, but I would encourage you to do your own continued research and education. I'll make sure to link in the show notes all the things I talked about in this episode. On the next episode, I will be discussing planning for retirement in more detail. If you have any feedback, please feel free to send me an email at podcast at therenpo.com. That's T-H-E-R-E-N-P-O dot com. I would also appreciate it if you left a review wherever you podcast. That helps this show be discoverable to others and also helps me understand where things can be improved. Don't forget to subscribe and auto-download new episodes so you don't miss any of the future topics. Thank you for listening, and I'll catch you on the next episode. Oh, 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 oh